Learningmeasure.tv Science and Engineering Podcast with Emphasis on Measurement Brought to you by David Archer and LearningMeasure.com Episode 11 Power Traceability Hello, uh, I'm David Archer, uh, owner of LearningMeasure.com and LearningMeasure.tv and uh, this podcast is sponsored by TradePublic.com, GoToMeeting.com, as part of the Blueberry community of podcasts. Um, what I think we're going to do on every episode from now on, talk a little bit about what's going on with leisure, LearningMeasure.com, just to, to, to inform you what's going on. First of all, LearningMeasure.com is a subscription-based uh, training website associated with this podcast. Um, when you register at LearningMeasure.com as a student, you get access, free access to all our courses for two weeks. After that, if you want continued access and want to support the course development and this podcast, you can subscribe for $5 a month. Okay, but I wanted to mention this week uh, the consultant um, part of the website. Uh, what we're looking for is a network of consultants that we can draw on to provide content or send work their way or basically just some sort of community of uh, uh, independent con uh, contractors in the engineering field. Um, and uh, just go to our site, sign up as a student, and then follow, go to the consultant site and follow the instructions for registering to become part of our consultant network. We'll talk about that more maybe later in a different podcast. Anyway, what we want to talk about this uh, the podcast is power measurement. Um, we're gonna it's going to be um, somewhat general. We're really interested in RF power measurements is what we'll talk about eventually. Um, but first, of all, we'll start out with what is power. Well, I've taken something like this eraser here. And I move it from here to here. That takes work. Work is, uh, I have to put some force on it and apply the force through a distance to uh, um, provide work. Work, work is the force times the distance so this is the for actually it's the force in the direction you're moving and the distance you travel along that path. So I, like if you have an object that's on a, let's say a track, and you pull on it like this, so that you've got a force this way, and it moves this way, it's only the component of force along the direction it goes that counts towards work. Okay, work, energy, this is measured in joules. Okay, energy is measured in joules, work is in, in, um, uh, measured in joules. As we said before, energy is, work is what you get, energy is what you use to pay for it. They're all measured in joules. Okay, so what is power then? Power is the time rate of doing work, or time rate of change of energy. It tells you the rate at which energy is being um, uh, transferred to something. Um, for instance, we already know for a resistor, let's say I have some current source, I, and this is R, Well, the power delivered to that resistor, P, equals I squared R. Now, we talked about this in a previous podcast. Power delivered to a load is this. It's all SCO. You can talk about the voltage, right? Well, let's not, actually, let's not worry about voltage. The important thing is that, um, 
you can, you can very precisely, uh, current is one of the SI units, you can measure resistance precisely, you can measure current precisely. This is one of the most precise measurements of power we can make. Now what happens to, the, so this power is delivered, that means some energy at some rate is being delivered to this resistor. Well, where's the energy going? You know, energy is conserved. Well, the answer is it goes into heating up the resistor. So anything that goes into this resistor uh, shows up, uh, that's delivered to that resistor shows up as heat. Heat has to be dissipated somehow. But now you have a precise way of generating a known heat by putting in um, a known power. So what you can do is you can have some sort of container and let's say you fill it with water and you stick a resistor in here. And you put it, hook it up to some sort of current source. Okay. Okay, and then you put a thermometer in here of some sort, some sort of temperature measuring device. Um, so then you can get the temperature. So if you put in a known amount of power, it's going to increase the, the water temperature. Now generally, you'd want to do things like insulate, put some insulation around the thing, maybe around the top. You might want to actually control flows of cooling water. You might want to try to measure the temperature change with time. You might try to keep the temperature at some equilibrium value by putting a known amount of cooling fluid through it. But you can then precisely determine the amount of uh, heat that's or the amount of power that's delivered to the water. Because you know what's delivered to the resistor. It all has to be dissipated in heat, so it all goes to the water. Okay, well, then it, let's forget that for a minute. Let's take the resistor out and put something else in there. Okay. One thing you could put in there, let's say, is some sort of, you could put some sort of tube in there, let's say, and you could shine, let's say, you have a little optical thing that absorbs light. You could put light through here, and you could heat up the water that way. Well, you can compare that to with, with your um, calibrated resistor and current to, get to figure out exactly what the uh, a given optical power is. Or you could, the other thing you can do, this is, is you could put, okay, let's have some sort of RF transmission line with some sort of uh, sensor down here to measure power, okay? And then ha has some wire back that gives an indication back to some meter. Okay, now, again, you can measure the power delivered to this sensor. Um, what we're talking about here is called calorimetry. calorimetry. Um, but let's say you have some power delivered. To the, you can precisely compare that to your resistor so you can figure out what the actual power delivered to this device is. In this case, an RF power sensor. Well, it's, you know, with some method, you know, by measuring temperature. Well, it's going to be some constant, well, let's call it, let's call it C, um, times the power indicated on the meter because they're not going to be the same. That sort of calibrates the meter. Well, not quite, because that's not really what you want to know, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, right now, I've got to pay the bills. I waste hours in traffic to get to my clients' offices for meetings. In fact, I spend more time getting to the meetings than I actually do meeting. This can't really be productive. Great news for anyone who feels unproductive. There is an easier and more affordable way Go to Meeting, the award-winning service that lets you hold meetings over the internet with people in multiple location. Just log in to gotomeeting.com and start meetings with a click. Instantly, everybody sees your computer desktop on their computer screen. It's like meeting in person, but less expensive and less time-consuming. 
Meet from your office, home, hotel, anytime, anywhere. Plus, you can hold as many as meetings as you like for one flat rate. Try GoToMeeting free for 45 days. Just visit gotomeeting.com backslash podcast. That's gotomeeting.com backslash podcast. Do more and travel less with GoToMeeting. Okay, back to our calibration of our power sensor. Well, we got, we got this number. We can, we can calibrate the delivered power. But when we, what we really want to know is if we have some source, I don't know what it is, and we want to stick our power sensor out here, we don't really want to measure the power delivered, well, power delivered, which is equal to C times the, the pow, indicated power, okay? We want to know the available power to a, to a load that's matched to this, this load. We'll call that PA. That's really what you want to measure with, with power sensor. So how do you do that? Well, there is this correction. The power actually delivered to the power sensor is going to be 1 minus gamma reflection coefficient squared times the available power. That's equal to the power delivered. Okay? So, that's what we really want to know. So, what we can do now is, well, look, if, if you put that in there, we have, we, we come to the conclusion that the available power equals this constant we did got from calorimetry divided by 1 minus the reflection coefficient squared times the indicated power. This thing here, we'll just call that k. This k is basically the kind of the, the related to the uh, calibration uh, factor that you'll see on most power sensors. Okay. So, how do you, how would you, let's say you have this as a standard, how would you transfer this type of power measurement um, to, let's say, another power, power meter? Well, one way you can do it. is to measure, okay, you can have a, some sort of source, a stable source. It's important that it's stable. And then you alternately connect your standard power meter, standard, and your device under test power meter. This is the alternate connection to a stable power source method. Now, what you do is, okay, you stick your, your standard on there, and you get PA, which is equal to, as we said before, well, this K, we'll call it K standard times the indicated power. Okay? Then we put the dot on there. When we measure the available power, we don't know, we measure a sum power. It's going to be K dot device under test P, we'll call it P dot. Okay? So, well, you can see we can solve between these two, we can solve for this. We got this K standard equals. Um, uh, K, or sorry, K dot is K standard times PI over P dot. Okay, so that's one way of calibrating. Um, uh, a power meter once you have something calibrated from calorimetry. Um, 
then you say, well, how accurate is that? How would I do that? Well, one of the things we haven't looked at is the source. How do you stabilize the source? How do you know that the, there's no reflection coefficient off this connector, and what do you do about it? Well, one thing you can do, and a lot of uh, power, power, a lot of signal sources, RF power sources, have the ability to do leveling. So what you do is you have this sensor, this source, that has leveling capability, and you go into a power splitter. Uh, so the power goes this way and this way. These are connectors of some sort. And you put some sort of leveling sensor and you threw some sort of box back to the source. This keeps the power at the power splitter output stable regardless of what load impedance you put up here. You can actually, knowing the S parameters of this, I'm not going to go over that too much, you can also come up with a equivalent reflection coefficient for this port in a leveling configuration. I won't go into that detail. But you can use that to make that correction if you want or not, because typically the reflection coefficients from this sort of leveling thing, this gamma equivalent, is really very small. It's a very small correction unless you're doing really precision work like in a uh, uh, primary standards lab or something or, a, or a, a high level calibration lab, you probably are not too concerned about that. So then you can put your alternate connection between your DUT and your standard and get a much better calibration transfer from your, because one of the things you know is Calorimetry, as you probably can guess, is an expensive way to calibrate something. This is a much cheaper way to calibrate something to, so that you have a traceable power measurement back to some, uh, well, in this case, the current's a SI unit, so it's back to primary standards for current, uh, maybe some voltage standards at a high level, um, and through thermometers, you know, Kelvin is a, uh, base unit that you can get traceable back to your national lab or back to, um, well, physical constants or something. Um, okay. Um, at this point, we'll be back in a minute right after this. One of LearningMeasure.tv's sponsors is TradePub.com. TradePub.com is a site where one, one can sign up for a large number of free trade publications. If you'd like to support this podcast, uh, go to the learningmeasure.tv site, scroll down to the free publications link, and choose one of the magazines or one of the, one of the publications or one of the categories and sign up through that link. Each pu publication subscribed to through this link on LearningMeasure.tv website helps keep Learning Measure TV on the air. Thank you for your support. Okay, what can you do once you have a calibrated power meter? Well, lots. Power is a fundamental measurement uh, that you make in most RF and microwave uh, measurement shops or test labs or even development labs. Um, power becomes more fundamental at uh, microwave frequencies than voltage because in some cases you can't even define voltage uniquely. Um, so this was a fairly short introduction to how to calibrate a power sensor. Uh, next week we're going to talk a little bit, well we'll see what we talk about next week. I really want more feedback from you guys. Um, if you want any topic whatsoever discussed, send us an email at suggestions at learningmeasure.tv. Or again, if you have some product that you want to show on our podcast, we're still trying to find somebody uh, who'd be willing to come on and, and sell their wares. Or if you want to, if you want to um, be interviewed on the podcast and you want to, uh, um, because you're a consultant and you're trying to um, uh, get more exposure, uh, 
come on our podcast, send us an email at vendors at learningmeasure.tv, and uh, we would like to talk with you. All right, uh, I guess that's it for this episode. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.